imposter syndrome is going to be forever. At some point, it's going to hit you. As you move and grow in your life, in your work life, in your love life, in your family life, as you move and you grow, you become a mom, there's going to be some sort of imposter syndrome. Am I good enough? Should I be doing more? On top of the fact that I'm already doing so much. You're never going to feel like you're ready. You just have to start. You're going to learn a little bit more. And as you go, you will grow. And stop doubting yourself. At this point, the more you keep doubting yourself, I need you to remember is the more you hold yourself back. You also have to clap for yourself. Because many people are not going to clap for you. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. It is me, it is Gatleo Malela. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for choosing me every single day. I really, truly do appreciate it. This video, <sighs> this video is going to be a little bit different for me, but um, as you know, I always share all of the things that I go through, things that I'm feeling to a certain degree. I don't entirely share everything, but um, I feel like it's really important for me to share this video with you today because because of an Instagram post, okay? But before we get started, thank you so much for choosing me over and over again. Thank you so much for being here. If you do like this video at the end of the video, please like and subscribe. Join the channel, join the membership space. I have been on a membership space break for a little bit, um, probably about a month now, but we are, we're back on form. Okay, we're back on form and it will, this video will explain a little bit why I have just been creating content for here and not necessarily the membership space, um, but there is a video that's going to be dropping soon if it already hasn't in the membership space. So thank you so much for being here. We are going to be talking about something that I've been struggling with quite a lot recently and it's imposter syndrome. And the reason why this video idea was coined is because I put up a couple of Instagram stories. If you're not following me on Instagram, please do. So sorry about that. That's not Lady Malel. I can tell you for free. Yes, it is. I put up a couple of stories on Instagram uh, last week as I record this and I was surprised at the amount of people who actually responded and said, I'm feeling the same way. I didn't know what it was called, this and this, and it kind of inspired me to do this video. So very chilled, very laid back. We're going to talk. Um, I was thinking about it quite a lot yesterday and I wanted to write some things down. <laughs> which again ties into the imposter syndrome. You guys, here we are. We're going to be talking about how I have been struggling with a lot of imposter syndrome, especially in the last, I'd like to say month, maybe even going on two. And I'm very, very good at hiding what I am really going through because if there's one thing about me, I will work. I will never disappear for a really long time, even though I do say that oh, I'm going to take a break and then I never do. So let's discuss imposter syndrome for a little bit before I get into how it's been affecting me and maybe great ways in which you can overcome imposter syndrome if you are somebody who is struggling with it as well. I don't know why I'm so nervous because I feel like uh, I'm going to be sharing a lot of how I really have been feeling with regards to this over the last couple of months. Imposter syndrome is when you have this essential like fear of being successful, right? There's this fear of how if you do something, will you ever really be successful? It comes based off of fear. A lot of comparison. So you are sitting and you are looking at other people who are in your line of work. A lot of comparison where you feel like you are not worthy, you're not good enough. You feel as if if you try to do something, it's going. you're not going to be successful. You're not going to be great at it, even though 
<laughs> Even though, and I'll explain this, especially when it comes to me and my coaching business, I'll explain this a little bit later on in the video. Even though you know that you are really good at what you do, you are really good at what you do, not only because you know it, right, internally, but also mostly because other people affirm that in you. If it's not your clients, it's your followers and the people that have subscribed to you, you guys affirm me all the time. And it's one of the reasons why even when I do not want to create content, I, I push myself to create content. That's also a personality thing. <laughs> That's also just a me thing. So imposter syndrome is essentially driven from fear, from just the fear of being successful. Will I ever be successful or will I actually be found out that I'm a fake or is something going to come out that I'm a fake and I am not truly who I say that I am and all of these things. So let's say you get a new job and you're really good at this job. You know what you are doing because you've been doing it for years now, but now you're in a new space, you're in a new job, you've got new colleagues around you, all of this, and something hits one day where you're just sitting and thinking to yourself, I don't deserve to be here. I don't deserve to be in this space. I don't, people are gonna catch me out, man. People are gonna catch me out and I am going to be seen as a fraud and a liar and a, all of this. You start feeling all these feelings. And then you hit a point where it's comparison. Now you're comparing yourself to people that are in this line of work too. You're comparing yourself to seasoned life coaches. You're comparing yourself to seasoned project managers or, um, people who head up project divisions, or you're comparing yourself to other content creators, especially in this space. I feel like for me, this is where it's been hardest. This is where I have been hit with the most severe form of imposter syndrome with the coaching and with the social media content creation. And you sit as a content creator in the space and you look at other content creators that are doing really well, that are doing even better than you. And you're just like, hey, hello, for me, it's even harder because na lady am official, anybody? So I suffer with a lot of imposter syndrome because I'm thinking to myself, people are gonna catch me out that I'm gonna be a fraud and I don't deserve to be successful in this. Do I, am I going to be okay with, you know, how people are going to perceive me if I put out something like this? Am I going to be, Emma, 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 you are coming up with everything, anything and everything under the sun to deter you from actually getting started or actually showing your greatness and showing that I am made for this. I am good to do this. Like, try me. I am good to do this. Why I even say that I can't believe I'm talking about this is because I don't ever want to come across online as if I'm speaking on things that I do not know or as if I'm speaking about things that I'm not sure of or I haven't experienced. A lot of my content and a lot of the advice that I give online or a lot of the things that I share even in my unpopular opinions are things that I'm willing to stand by are things that I you can even in my sleep you can wake me up even I'll be like eh eh Yes, no, but it's an unpopular opinion. Men like this are red flags or da da da, da. Like I'm, I, I'm there with it, right? And so for me, it's things that I know very well that I am prepared to back it up even if I were to be asked. So for <laughs> the last couple of months has been really difficult for me in that I just haven't felt like I'm worthy or good enough to be in the spaces that I'm in. So with me, I'll write things down because I strive for perfectionism. If I do this, I am covering each and every single loophole. I am covering every single, listen, you can't catch me out. This is what I try to do with my work and the things that I put out online. Um, this also includes my coaching business and all of that. How imposter syndrome hits me in the social media content creation space. I can, you know, I don't even have to say social media content. It's such, uh, in the content creation space, 
is the fact that I'm, I'm comparing and comparison is a thief of joy. I think we all know this line, the saying that comparison is a thief of joy. I already live a very good and blessed life. And there's certain influences that I started watching and then they made me feel like the life that I live is not good enough. I should be living my life this way. I should be, this is the kind of life that I should be living if I want to grow my content online, if I want to grow my numbers online, if I want to bring in more work from brands and all of this, this is what I should be doing. And the imposter syndrome would be so overwhelming. It would literally just sit on my shoulders all the time. Is my mic okay? Okay. It would literally sit on my shoulders all the time that I would f end up feeling like I'm not good enough, like I'm not worthy, like I'm not this. It still hits sometimes, but with then getting to know myself and learning myself a little bit more, I realized that I'm not that kind of person. I can't expect to get to that level or those kinds of numbers if I don't want to share very intimate parts of my life. I do not like to share my relationships online. I do not like to share certain things that happen in my house. I will share what I feel comfortable sharing because I do not want members of my family being dragged. So I will not talk about my relationship with my sister, the bad side, right? It's mostly good. Trust me. It's 80% of it is really good, but I'm not going to talk about the fact that I fought with my sister. I'm not going to talk about my relationship or show my partner online. And let's be real and let's be frank. These are the things that people love to see right online. I am not going to share certain travel, uh, trips and all of that because sometimes it's just a trip where it's a retreat to myself I, and, and a treat to myself where I'm just like, I've been working so hard. I really don't want to pick up my camera. I really don't even want to show it online. I really don't even want to da, da 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 I don't like to talk about my relationships online. I'm not going to tell you that, oh, so-and-so and I were fighting because he did this and he blah, blah, blah. And these are the things that essentially bring in views and likes and subscriptions and all of this. And, and I, 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 I am not prepared to sacrifice those parts of my life for the sake of views and likes and follow and follows and work and all of that. I'm not prepared to do that. Also because I'm older, right? And I, imposter syndrome also hit a lot when it came to me being ageist, even towards myself. I felt like maybe I'm not worthy enough to be in the TikTok space because every time I come out with a response to a certain content creator that I just don't agree with or whatever, uh, people will come for me and talk about how you shouldn't even be on TikTok. You're too old to be on TikTok. Or they'll mention condescending terms. Hi, mama. Hi, this. Hi, this. Hi, this. For me, they're not really condescending. Um, it just shows that you are aware that I'm older than you. And maybe listen for nuggets and wisdom, right? But I felt some sort of imposter syndrome when it came to the fact that maybe I don't deserve to be on these certain platforms. And a huge disclaimer here, I'm not doing any of this so that you can feel pity for me or you can feel some kind of shame, like, oh, keep going, cat, or whatever. I will keep going either way, chat. <laughs> I will keep going either way because that's what's ingrained in me. Being productive and working my booty off and being good at what I do is ingrained in me. We, we, it's, it's ingrained in the Malala sisters, okay? And I'm talking about the other one. We are good at what we do. And I don't, that'll never take anything away. You know, we work, we, we put out everything into our work. So for me, I will continue to work. It doesn't really make matter of a difference. However, it doesn't mean that I don't feel these feelings as well. And I wanted to have this conversation with you guys so that 
you guys can know that you're, you're not alone in this, right? You're not alone in this. I feel it too. With my coaching, I mean, I've only been coaching for over a year. So it really hasn't been long of me being in the coaching space. Imposter syndrome hits me hard in the coaching space because this is where... Mm, <clears throat> This is where I absolutely feel like I have to be fantastic at what I do. The perfectionism here with well, social media ah, is fine, you know, but here the perfectionism is so high that I need to know exactly what I am doing, what I am saying, how I want it to look, how I want to present myself to the world, especially when it comes to coaching, because this is my job. Have I been extremely hard on myself? Yes. Did I feel like I'm not worthy to carry the struggles of other people within me and know the struggles and actually advise them and help them and become their accountability partner and all of this? Did I actually beat myself up about it? So many times. Because for the last couple of months, almost two months, where I feel like I am I worthy enough to be in these spaces. The coaching one is even wilder to me. For, for me to even say that, I mean, only having been coaching for maybe a year and six months, I'd have to go back and check, but officially coaching for about a year and six months since studying for it and all of that, I've had a pretty decent amount of clients, a little over 80 at this point. But for me, it's just like, I still have those feelings. I still have those feelings like, am I good enough? Should I be doing more? On top of the fact that I'm already doing so much. And there's many, many ways in which you can overcome imposter syndrome or you can manage it because I feel like imposter syndrome is going to be forever. At some point, it's going to hit you as you move and grow in your life, in your work life, in your love life, in your family life. As you move and you grow, you become a mom. There's going to be some sort of imposter syndrome. You become a wife, there's going to be some sort of imposter syndrome. You become a manager, there's going to be some sort of imposter syndrome. You become a business owner, there's going to be some sort of imposter syndrome. It's, it'll happen. It'll happen. But there are ways in which you can manage it and mitigate it. And these are the ways. No. Number one, how to overcome it. You need to have these thoughts of, you're never going to feel like you're ready. You're never going to feel like you're ready. Even if you want to be a content creator, you're never going to feel like you're ready. You just have to start. And I feel like it's one of the things that we say and preach a lot as content creators to people who want to become content creators and want advice. You just have to start. At no point are you ever going to feel ready. You're never going to feel ready. So just get on with it. Start and see. You should be your biggest competitor, your biggest critic, nobody else. And I know that's easier said than done. But the gist of it is you're never going to feel ready. So it's only when you start and you build that momentum and you keep going and you keep going and you keep learning and growing from your mistakes and whatever it is that you're doing is where it's going to feel a little bit better. You're going to learn a little bit more. And as you go, you will grow. Remember that you are not responsible for others' opinions of you. You are responsible for the opinions that you have or, or on yourself, okay? You are not responsible for others' opinions of you. You are responsible for the opinions of yourself, to yourself. You know what I'm saying? So what people say, how they will respond to you online, how they will receive you, you are responsible for your opinions on yourself, not others' opinions of you. You shouldn't care about that. Again, easier said than done, but nothing in life is easy. Nothing in life is easy. Growing and becoming successful is not easy. There's a lot of laboring and hard work and, and receiving bad comments and criticism and all of this and being dragged for filth, especially if you're in the social media content creation space, right? Or if you are promoting your business online, you will be dragged for filth. 
People will tell you that you don't know what you're talking about. People will tell you that, oh, sit down, you granny. Sit down, you granny. <laughs> you'll, you'll want to come onto the content creation space at 40. And you're thinking, maybe I'm too old for this. You're not. You're not. There are people on the YouTube space, on the TikTok space, that are seasoned doctors, psychologists, seasoned marketing people, seasoned whatever, whatever, and they are in their 40s and their 50s, and they're thriving. So it's never too late to start. But you shouldn't worry about the opinions of others. You should worry about the opinions of yourself. Also, stop trying to control how others see you. Now, on my life by design tiktok and instagram pages not not my personal ones right the life by design the coaching pages i talk about this i talk about control and letting go of control you need to let go of the control of how others see you you cannot control that you cannot control how people are going to see you, whether in a relationship setting, friendship setting, this, the setting, social media setting, you cannot control it. So the least you could do is try and let it go and stop doubting yourself. At this point, the more you keep doubting yourself, I need you to remember is the more you hold yourself back. The more you hold yourself back. I doubt myself a lot. But there's always that other part of me that wants to keep pushing forward. That's just like, even within my doubt, even within my doubt, I got this. I can do this. I'm ready for the criticism. I'm ready for the backlash. I'm ready for the this. But the bigger picture here is, this is what I know. And this is what I'm going to do. And this is the space. Oops. This is the space that I want to be in. Therefore, I'm going to do it. And I don't care who says what. I think it's important to become your biggest, biggest supporter, especially when it comes to imposter syndrome. Another big thing is keep a journal of your successes and your wins. You write them down. You post them online. You got a brand deal, write it down. You got a, you got a, a, a new client, talk about it online. You got a job promotion, write it down, talk about it. Listen, ain't nobody gonna tell you nothing. You work really hard to get to that place. You work really hard to open that door for yourself. Was I on ETV on the news? Yes, I was. And I spoke about it. And I've done speaking engagements for really great companies in the South African space. Right? You write these things down. You remind yourself of the uh, successes that you have done because of the work that you are doing or because of the space that you have entered into. That will remind you that uh uh there's something that people see in you that believe and and they they believe in it and they find comfort in it and they trust that you know what you're doing. I need to remind myself all the time is that the people who I coach on a one-on-one -on -one basis trust that they believe that I know what I am doing. And I do. <laughs> and I do. I know what I'm doing. And a lot of the clients that I have watch me on here. And a lot of the time I'll have to say that now we're, I'm in work mode. I'm in coach mode. So forget about the Katleo that's doing Candid with Cats and all of that. That's the fun me. That's the fun me, but this is the work me. I'm still fun, but I'm working now. And I want you to know that you are here to put in some work in yourself too. I'm just going to hold you accountable. That's all. The, that's the only reason why I'm here. But you also have to clap for yourself because many people are not going to clap for you. These are great ways in overcoming imposter syndrome. I hope this helps. I feel very naked in this here video because I'm sharing something that I have truly felt for a very, very long time and I've been nervous to share. Have you been struggling with imposter syndrome? Let me know. Let me know. Let's talk about it. Let's be honest. Let's be real, bro. Let's be real. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Comparison is a thief of joy. Don't compare yourself to other creators or compare yourself to other people or other colleagues in the workspace and whatever. Don't. Compare yourself to yourself. You should be comparing who you are now to who you were last week. And thinking to yourself, am I better? Am I growing? 
and write it down. Write down all the successful things that you have done in one day. When you're writing in your journal, you're like, yo, today I did a laundry. I was having a bad mental day, but I woke up, I made my bed, I did a laundry, I uh, recorded content. These things might look like they're small things, but these are successes leading you up to being that successful mogul that you're fighting to be. All right, I'm going to end it here. Gonna film a little bit more of a fun video now. Thank you so much for watching. I really would love to know what your thoughts are on imposter syndrome. Have you been feeling it? Have you been going through it as well? And let's comment down below. Let's help each other out as well. Let's exercise grace and kindness, especially in the comments. But you guys have been, you guys are the most well behaved people. And I really do appreciate that. I really do appreciate that. It's a family here. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, subscribe, and join the JK family. If you would like to be a member of the JK space, there's over 35 maybe at this point, I don't know, videos in the membership space. So there's a whole lot more content in that space as well. And that's, that's, that's more authentic me especially when I'm sitting down and I don't have any makeup on and I'm doing like a boudoir sessions or whatever. The members will know what that is. But anyway, so thank you so much. Beat the imposter syndrome. You can do it. You are meant for this. You are in the right place. Okay. I'll see you so much. I'll see you so much. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for choosing me over and over again. Until the next one, I'll see you soon. Sayonara.